What's up? What's up? We're going to start off with week two's stream era sample challenge video. Shout out to everybody involved. Kane for the video. I have not even heard it yet. So I saved it just for this. Let's go.
we go. Thank you for everybody that participated this week. I'm putting something in for next week. Promise you that. You heard it here. I'm putting something in next week. And so that was uh, the guys from the Facebook group, Sample, sample Challenge number two, Stream Era Facebook group. Uh, first was Kane. Um, second was Gemini 4D. And then Gamma Pods was the last one that you heard there. So go check them out. And if you want to participate, please do so. We got a great sample for this week. And uh, yeah, we could always, always use more participation. So shout out to the chat. What's up with you guys? Hope everybody's doing well. What's up, Brute? And what's up? What's up, Gem? And Rhythmic Design, Mr. Bobby Long. Um, yeah. Yeah, the snares. These dudes, man, they do it. They do it good. They do it well. So, all right. Well, here we are, guys. Day seven. You guys are still here. Let me get this off my screen because it looks like I'm quite blue. <clears throat> blue at the moment. So, I will get rid of that. And, um... Yeah, what we're doing today is I have some iPad apps. I've got a bunch of music apps, and then there's a couple in particular I think are very interesting that you folks are going to want to check out. So I've got this little shot right here. Let me see if that's going to be bright enough for us. Make this a little bit brighter. And... If you don't own like really expensive equipment and you'd like to get some really good sounds that you don't currently have, sounds that you could even manipulate yourself, you know, that you can synthesize yourself, um, you know, take preset patches and make them into something that you want to use, then I'm going to show you guys how you can do that using an iPad. And this is a legit looper. What we have here is a pretty complex setup. So um, you probably can't really, no, you're not going to be able to really see it from where you guys are, unfortunately. But what we're doing is I've got everything running into this streaming mixer. And then I've got a couple outputs on this streaming mixer. And these are going out to this. They're going out to this interface, left and right, right here, left and right. So these are the inputs. These go into the camera connection kit, and that goes into the iPad. So then there's an output here. So any audio from... Shit. Where the fuck is my feed?
Dude, ah, Jesus. That has never happened before. Completely lost my connection. <sighs> All right. Oh, so, I don't know. I think I'm back. Let me see. I will pick right up where I was. So let me find out where I was. Oh, whoops, that's the wrong one. That's not it. Come on. Okay. Hey, that's a nice thumbnail. Okay. All right, I see that. Okay. So that's into the iPad. Wow. And then I've got a couple outputs on the streaming mixer. All right. And these are I see what happened. When I touched that, it went gone. So I won't touch that again. What I was saying was, in this, I have a couple inputs that goes from my mixer into here and then out into this thing. So this is a Behringer U control. It's got two inputs. These inputs come through the Behringer into the camera connection kit that's on the iPad. The iPad has this app right now called Loopy HD. And I hit my camera as I got up and I screwed everything up. But you know what? This is gonna be an awesome show. It's gonna be an awesome show because I said so. All right, so this thing has outputs as well. So these outputs, so it comes into the iPad, does its thing, and then it goes back out, and then it's gonna be coming in over here on the deluge, and the deluge will, will take it, process it, and it'll go back to the mixer, do its thing, come back to the mix uh, streaming mixer so that you guys can hear it. Um, all that is complicated, but it's not that for anyone. This is just because I'm trying to show you guys uh, what what these apps can do. What I was saying, I don't know if this made it, I don't know if this made it to the, uh, before it cut off, but what I was saying was that if you want to make your own sounds, but you don't necessarily, you know, want to have huge amounts of gear or you, you know, money isn't really like, like that. So you can spend money on expensive stuff. There's a lot of really great iPad apps that do some great things. Which side is the freaking back? <laughs> okay, this is the front. All right, that sounds better. Okay. Maybe like this. Try to get out of my way but so that you guys can hear it. So um, these iPad apps range anywhere from 10 bucks, you know, two bucks, 10 bucks, you know, 50 bucks. Um, so let me just show you a couple. I'm gonna check the chat, just see who's here. Make sure I didn't miss anything while I was gone. Thank you guys for still being here. All right, so let me just take a quick look and I'm gonna show you these apps and I'm gonna actually show you this one specific app that can be used to create. Uh, that can be used to uh, sketch out performances. So if you wanna do live performances and all you have is an iPad, or an iPhone, then I gotta stop touching stuff. Then you can actually have yourself a live performance, live looping performance with only this, and this Behringer U control and a couple of RCA uh, inputs and outputs. It's totally doable. It's actually not that complicated. Um, the settings and stuff, I can share those with you so you can see. These are how I used to make music back in the day before I had the ability to buy anything. I would use a few apps together, like audio, uh, audio bus. What is it? Um, the audio bus and uh, audio bus remote, Loopy, Beatmaker, um, Moog. You know, there's a lot of cool synthesizer apps that I like. There's drum machines, and a lot of these things are free, so it's pretty interesting. All right, let me check the chat. Um, hey, what's up, guys? 
I make beats and yeah. So anyway, what I'm going to do is give you guys a show of this thing. This is loopy HD loopy HD looks like this. See that little loopy icon. It's a little blurred out. But that's all right. So when you get into loopy HD, you've got all kinds of different settings, parameters, things that you can choose. But if you just want to make music, um, this is the important part is this grid. These are your loops. So, and it actually works very easily. All you got to do is tap the first one. That's recording. When I tap it again, it's going to start playback. That's recording. When I tap it again, it's going to start playback. Okay. So that's recording. When I tap it again, it's going to start playback. If I wanted to do this, that's recording. When I tap it again, it's going to start playback. That's recording. When I tap it again, it's going to start playback. That's recording. When I tap it again, it's going to start playback. That's recording. Okay. When it I tap actually it again, has it's a visual playback. Uh, it has a visual. It has a visual metronome. So a metronome, a visual metronome, you can turn that on so that you don't need to hear it in the background. It's one of the most annoying things for uh, somebody watching a video is hearing somebody's metronome constantly going off in the background. So you can mute that and just have a visual metronome just like this. That's recording. When I tap it again, it's going to start playback. One, two, three. Boom. One. That's recording. Two. Three, when I tap it again, boom. it's going to start playing. So when I'm looking at this, that's recording. When I tap it again, it's going to okay. start playback. That's recording. When okay. I tap it again, it's going to start playback. Okay, here we go. That's recording. When I tap it again, it's going to start playback. That's recording. When I tap it again, it's going to start playback. That's recording. Done. When I tap it again, it's going to start playback. That's recording. It's all audio. When I tap it again, it's going to start playback. That's recording. When I tap it again, it's going to start playback. Now you're That's getting recording. When I tap it again, it's going to start. What it's doing now is it's running the audio back through itself and blah, blah, blah. But you can see how it's working. It's very simple. And now I've got three loops. Now these three loops you can do things with. So if I focus this in a little bit, maybe I can even drop this down. <clears throat> I mean, you can use this in conjunction with your other hardware. Like if you have an MPC, um, this will take MIDI. So you can MIDI this. You know how we don't have a, a real looper inside your MPC? your MPC X or MPC live does not have a real looper. This can be midied to your uh, MPC. So when you're using your MPC, if you want to have a looper, a live looping session with your MPC, then this can do that. You'll hit play on your MPC and it will start your looper session. So now I can actually, like if I hold down these, you get more parameters and these parameters, they say, this camera is amazing, but it's very difficult to get high, you know, brightness uh, text on there. Um, so it says share. It says import, pan, and volume. So if I want to turn this one up, I can actually just turn it up just like that. So if I play it. That's recording. When I tap it again, it's going to start playback. That's recording. When I tap it again, it's going to start playback. That's recording. When I tap it again, it's going to start playback. So you get the drift. If you That's tap recording. it again, when I tap it again, it'll it's actually start playback. stop the playback. That's recording. When I tap it again, it's going to start playback. So there you go. Then it shuts that off. And now if I get rid of the flashing, then we don't have to watch that anymore. So if you double tap it, it'll start it immediately. So you don't have to wait for it to cycle around. 
when I tap it again, it's gonna start playback. And, and if you wanna erase it, it's very easy too. You just, that's recording. Use hand right. gestures, gone, gone. This is a very super quick and easy thing you can do. So if I make this loop like this and then stop it right, if I make this loop like this and then stop Try it that again. Right. If I make this loop, if I make the loop like this and I stop it like, if I make the loop like this and I stop it like, if I make the loop like this and I stop it like, if I make the loop like this and I double tap it and I stop it like, it shuts it right off. If I want to start it again, like if I make Turn it the back loop on. like this, if and I, I want to move it, it, like if I make the loop like this and I stop it, like if I make the loop like this, I just moved and I it. Stop it, like if I make the loop like this and I stop it, like if I make the now loop if I like want to make another one, and I stop it, like if I make the loop like this and I stop it, like if I make the loop, then I do one like and I stop it, like if I make the loop, then I do one like and I stop it, like if I make the loop, then I do one like and I stop it, like if I make the loop, then I do one like and I stop. All right, so now we're getting into some latency issues. So that's easy enough to fix because there's all kinds of, uh, you know, there's there's track management, there's there's things that you can change in here to get a better, um, you know, a better sound quality. Right now we're at the lowest. It's at 128. We're at 128, uh, you know, 128 frames. So I'm gonna go up to 512. And now we're gonna hear it. If I make the loop, then like I do this, one like, and I stop this. it like. If I make the loop like this, and that might have actually. Like, if I make that might have actually recorded the uh, buffering. So let me try that again. If I make the loop like this and I stop it like, if I make the loop okay. like this and Last I stop try. it like, if I make the loop okay. like this and Last I stop try. it like, if I make the loop okay. like. All right, now I'm gonna show you that you can actually merge these things. Um, I don't remember if I've ever done this before. So I can't remember, let me see, how do you merge them? Do you just bring them like that? You can actually merge them to one. Did that do it? Maybe not. That didn't do it, but you can actually merge them. So if you've got like eight of them, you can merge them all. I'm not I'm not proficient at this, but um, come on. Don't lock up on me now. So you can actually merge them. Oh, and this guy wants to be a little jerk. Okay, now it's gone. So you can you can merge them. You can do all kinds of different things. There's actually some effects. It does have uh, input, so you can uh, sorry import. So let's say you have an audio copy. Um, you know you can use an audio copy app like uh, Audio Share. I've never done this either. So let's see how hard this is. Oh, I haven't messed with that one in a while. So we'll let that one download. Loopy is amazing. So Loopy is just a looper app and it's super fun. Um, you can actually use it within this environment with other apps. Let, I'm gonna check the chat and then I'm gonna show you guys how to use this with other apps as its own perform, like an iPad performance. Uh, you know, this is like a, a performance rig if you know how to navigate it. So, all right. Let's see here. Oh, yeah, Mr. B, what's up, bro? Uh, yes, I am getting loopy. I mean, hey, loopy has been around forever and I've got it on all my iOS devices. And anytime I'm traveling, I always use it. It's beautiful. It's This is a beautiful app you can export these loops as individual files. Another huge thing about this, you guys, you guys would not believe this, but if I plug this iPad app right now into that giant mixer behind me, it that giant mixer with 32 simultaneous inputs will show up in this app. So 32 channels will show up in this app that I can choose from to record loops from. If you have a, a an interface with four inputs, then four inputs will show up. It's just dependent on how many inputs you have and make sure it's a multi-track uh, you know, interface, but it's pretty versatile. So, all right, let me go back here and all right. So brighten this up some. Now let me show you audio bus real quick. Show you audio bus. This is how you get all these apps into one another. 
So audio bus looks like this. I think it's, I don't know, five bucks or something, maybe. Um, so you've got an output and you've got an input source. So I'm going to make the output source loopy. And then I'm going to make the input source, and you can see there it's sitting there. It's kind of idle. So I'm going to open that up just to make sure that it's running. And then it, it will take me back automatically. And then I'm going to take a look at what I have for synths. These are all synths within my uh, iPad that I've either purchased or downloaded from somewhere or whatever. So let me choose something that I like. Um, I'm going to choose... There's this really cool one called Koala Sampler. And Koala Sampler uses uh, like very... Oh, no. Is that one crashing? I have Sample Wiz too. I'll use Sample Wiz. I haven't updated these apps at all in a long time, so wants to access my microphone. Okay. Welcome. No thanks. All right. So how this works is it will take the sound. You can see my voice right there. You see that level? So it'll actually take a it will take a small snippet of this app. Uh, this app, I'm sorry, will take a small snippet of my voice. Okay, I think you just, uh, I think all you have to do is hold it down. Hello. And now I want it to play back. I don't hear it. Okay, I know it did something. Oh, it's coming through Loopy. All right, so let me let me get rid of audio bus for a second. And I'll show you this koala first. I believe it's coming through Loopy. Hello. 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 Okay. Hello. Hello. It's immediate. Hello. 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 What are you doing in here? What are you doing in here? Hello. What are you doing in here? Okay. Um, let's try this. Kinda. Let's try it again. All right, I'm gonna bring up the volume. Actually, let's bring the pitch down. Try to bring the volume up. Hello. Hello. So if you want to like put one of these in, still not that loud because I don't have the volume turned up loud enough. Let me turn up the volume a little. So you can see, you can kind of like actually make music and this is free. Koala is free. So yeah, I know I sound like a, a weirdo right now, but there's a lot more you can do with this app. I haven't even really gotten into this app, to be honest with you. I just thought it was such a cool app that I had to have it because when you're on a train or a plane or something and you want a sampler, I always want a sampler. So this will allow you to do some pretty interesting things. 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 Pretty pretty interesting things. Pretty interesting things. On a Monday night. 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 Let's do Oh no. Alright. No, don't don't make me do it. Pretty interesting things. All right. Pretty interesting things. On a Monday night. 
Pretty interesting thing. On a Monday night. Pretty interesting thing. On a Monday night. Pretty interesting things. On a Monday night. Pretty I'm not. No, I can't. All right. So that's got some pretty cool stuff. And actually, it has these other sections in it, like perform uh, and sequence. So you can sequence these things. You can turn this into sequences and then launch the sequences, like in an MPC. Now, I haven't done all that yet, so I can't really explain all that. But, you know, just let me let me just show you the cool apps and then you can decide if you want to get into them and, and find out what they all do. Um, because, you know, we all don't have the information. I don't have your information. You don't have mine. So, you know, maybe this looks cool to you and um, you can give it a try. All right. So Koala was pretty cool. Let me go back and show you how to get audio into Loopy. Now that now that I've kind of showed you that. So there's Loopy. Bring it back in. Launch it. Okay, now I'm going to put Koala back in here. Okay. Again, Koala does not want to play nice with Audio Bus. There it is, finally. So when it pops up up there, then you know that it's now linked with Audio Bus. Now, if you want to get in and out of Audio Bus, it's pretty it's pretty easy. Um, there's these small little icons. And if you're if you're just here for the first time, guys, this is day seven of the Bob Ross Challenge. Okay, thirteen days of something that promotes the art community. So here we are, thirteen days. I'm on day seven. If I click this, oh, I just got rid of it. That's not what I wanted. All right, you've got your audio bus icon and your loopy icon. I'm going to go into loopy. This is actually your loopy transport controls. It's very difficult to see, I know. Let me try to focus this in. It says stop, and then there's a one with a count next to it. That means one bar. So I'm gonna make it four bars by tapping it. That doubles it once to two. Now that doubles it again to four. So now I'm at four. Now if I hit that button right there, the stop button, it's gonna start recording. I'm sorry, that's the record button. It's gonna start recording. So I do need a metronome of some sort. So let me go back over to Loopy. If you, if you tap the button next, there's like this little file with an arrow. If I tap that, that'll take me to audio bus. No, it won't. It'll take me to Loopy. I want to go to audio bus. There we go. So now that I'm in audio bus, I'm going to go over to Loopy real quick and I'm going to set this metronome so I can hear it. And then I'll shut it off immediately. There's my metronome. You even have a level here for your metronome. So let's take a listen to see how loud it is. I don't want to blow your eardrums out with a metronome or mine. Where's my play button? Oh, I don't have a play button yet. OK, that's playing. OK, now I just want to make sure the metronome, that's tolerable. OK. I'm going to clear that, and I'm going to stop it. OK, now I'm going to go back over to Koala, if it will let me. All right. Now, there's my transport controls at, at the top. I should have used my GoPro for this. I wanted like a good, clean, clear shot, but I didn't think about all the fact that it's not autofocus manual everything all right so now that this is running through uh now that it's running through loopy i actually need to turn the monitoring on or i wonder if i can turn it on on the interface either way there's a setting in here in the settings for monitoring so i'm going to turn that on hopefully we don't get some crazy feedback Okay. 
I'm still not hearing it. I should be hearing that right now. Go back over, just to make sure. I mean, I can hear that. So that should be coming through. Let's try that again. Hello. Oh, it still looks like it wants. Hello. Okay. Koala is not working with me. So we're going to get out of Koala. I'm going to stop this. Part of this thing is that I have never run Loopy through this huge mixer setup that I have with all this, you know, extra stuff. So there could be something I'm not thinking about. Um, that's happening to the audio that is not allowing me to record the way I want to record. But I'm going to give this uh, audio bus one more try with a different app. And then we'll see if that works. If it doesn't, I'm going to move on and we'll look at something else. This is an awesome app too. I love this app. Yeah, we're not getting any sound, which is a little bit of a pain. Let me see if it's this interface. Make sure that I don't have the monitoring off on this. Okay, that's not the problem. So that should absolutely be giving us audio through here. Since it's not, then I'm gonna get rid of audio bus. And we'll just look at the apps themselves. Okay, let's get rid of this one. Whoa, okay, that's what I was afraid of. Hang on, let me bring that down. too loud. The audio that's coming out of this thing is way too hot. Okay. I got to adjust that. Sounds a little, a little bit better. I don't like that. Now I've got a weird noise. All right. I'm gonna adjust some oscillators. this app. I just love these sounds. And they're really endless. Like, check them out. Look, there's so many of these. There's arpeggiators. Let's check out the arpeggios. Let's go to bass sound. There's all kinds of different contributors. Okay. 
also in this, there's actually, um, turn that down. There's actually other sections in here too, like uh, effect sections. quite a release on that. It's pretty wild. Alright, let's take the release down. Alright, so that's another uh, synth app. Um, there's the Animog is another really good, like good sounding synth app. Most of these are uh, music apps on here. This one is a beautiful one. I'll show you this one here in just a second. This is the uh, Model 15. This is the original Animog app. I think this is about like $30, I think, which is quite expensive for an app, but it is amazing. If, if you ever wanted a Moog synth, you got one right here. Let's go to a, a different preset. Let's use bass. Move up. Let me get a lead. And then you got this XY thing. Okay, I recorded that. Okay, try a pad. Too much. This one here. Basically, you got yourself a module that you can make to use to make sounds with, and then you just either need to link it with audio bus or with an iPad, uh, sorry, with something that records audio. You know, if I take this interface off of here, I could probably use audio bus. Yes, it won't be direct audio, but there's something happening within the, you know, transport controls that is not allowing me to do it the way I want to do it. So let me see. I really just want to show you that you can use apps to actually make music with. I'm not saying I'm going to compose, uh, you know, a masterpiece by any chance, by any stretch here, but it might be able to show you kind of what it can do. Now I'm actually getting audio, you can see. So I'm going to go to, here's the transport controls.
So that just recorded into loopy. So if I want another loop, I just tap it again. But I'm going to make a four bar loop now. So I'm going to tap it to double it. I made it four. Okay. I'm going to go up an octave. Okay, here we go. See if we can find a drum machine. I got nine bars left over here on my power, so. It says it's launching it. This is an older iPad, so let me just stop it so that it can friggin' launch without dying on me. Maybe that's what was holding it up. I'm not sure. Launch. All right, I'm going to get rid of that one. Thing is, is like I said, I haven't updated these, so I don't... Oh, you know what? I'll go back to Koala. Psh, koala will work now. Well, it won't work like I want that to work, but it'll work. Hello. On a Monday night. On a Monday night. There's an awesome recording from earlier. That's. I'm so glad that didn't go anywhere. Now let's go and adjust the loops, the loudness. Here's all the loops that we made. So there, I just made music on an iPad. Done. Yes. Um, so I just used three different apps and made a track. Well, not a track. You know, I made noise. I made noise with an app and different uh, apps in conjunction with each other. And it's really not hard. You just need to get a little used to the navigation between the apps. It's also all MIDI responsive. So if you've got a MIDI controller, you can set all these up on different MIDI channels. And then you don't have to scroll through. Then all you have to do is change the, the MIDI channel on your MIDI controller because they're multi-timbral MIDI apps. So you can just keep it on loopy. Say you've got your keyboard, uh, say you've got your piano on MIDI channel one and you've got your koala on MIDI channel two and so on. You can just keep it on loopy, have your MIDI controller on channel one, play your piano part on the first loop and then launch the second loop change it to MIDI channel two, and then play Koala. So that's how that workflow can help. Uh, all right, let me see what you guys are talking about. Ray D. My guy, Ray D. Good to see you in here, man. Thank you for being here. I appreciate you. Um, 
Yeah, this is the Ray D is an iPad guy. Hey, aren't we supposed to get together with something, man? We got to get together. We still got to get together. Um, so yeah. Anyway, what else we got? I dot. Oh. Okay. Oh, okay. He says there is. All right. So he says uh, this person. Um, there's a free Mac version. So somebody is saying that there's a free Mac version of Loopy. That's awesome. Um, in a couple weeks, I'll be getting my VCV rec model D. That's great. Mr. B that's great, man. I'd like to have a, uh, a full on, you know, modular system here. I just need some help picking some modules. I got the cash. So anybody got some good, uh, I, I want a really good sampling, uh, module, uh, do we want to trans transition this discussion or would you guys still like to see other things here or would you like to move on to something else? You tell me what you'd like to do. Um, and I'll continue looking through here a little bit. Um, then. Okay. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah, this shit is creepy, man. I agree. So let's move on then. If nobody wants me to continue on with this, um, the latency on YouTube isn't that great. So it's not like you guys haven't had time to respond. So I'll move on. What I was going to ask about were, so you're uh, a modular sampler. There's There's a couple. The one that I'm really looking at and Mr. B, you can tell me a little bit. You can tell us all a little bit more. Mr. B, are you still here? Mr. B, still here? Hey, man, if you're still here, I can pull you in. And you can tell me about... I I've got a couple questions about a couple uh, modules. If you're still here, man, let me know. Uh, and in the meantime, I'm going to look at this one, this specific one, and I'll pull it up. Pretty amazing. <laughs> Like I was looking at this thing like, wow, this might exactly be what I need as my first uh, modular system uh, module. So um, all right, so let me check this out. I'm going to pull this up, and then I'm going to pull it right here up on the screen. This thing is incredible. Hey, Ray D, you want to see some chopping on a friggin' uh, on a Eurorack module? Check this out. All right. I don't think this is the video that I was actually looking for, but we'll move we'll move to the next one if it's not. Let me change my screen. All right, that should be it right there. All right, check this out. And let me get this, it's zoomed. There we go.
very cool because the way that it works. So that thing is that's Bitbox 2.0. That wasn't the the actual video that I was looking for. I'm gonna grab see if I can grab that video. There's a really really good uh, tutorial or whatever. Uh, Hi, this is Aaron from 1010 Music, and today I'm gonna show you how to use drum loops inside Bitbox. We're gonna begin with a blank preset. And I'm going to load a file from my micro SD card. Choose the load function, scan through the available files on this micro SD card. I know that this first one is particularly good. It's a breakbeat loop that's already at 120 beats per minute. Load. I'm going to use an off screen MIDI controller to trigger this. So let's start with gate mode, in which when I press the key, it starts playing. When I release the key, it stops playing. And I'm going to switch to toggle mode, which means I can start it and stop it. Start, stop. Each time I press the key, it starts or stops it, which is a little easier to work this with. This is similar to loops. Ableton workflow. OK, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to play with some quantization settings. As you noticed, it starts and stops right away, which is sometimes good, sometimes not so much. On the second page of the properties, you'll find the quantization settings. And when you set this to one bar, the loop will start and stop according to the bars and beats counter inside the device. Right now, we're free running at 120 beats per minute. The bars and beats display is similar to what you would see on your DAW software. The clock can be done internally or through MIDI or analog clock. So now with the bar quantize set to one bar, when I press it, press it now, begins on beat one stop it it stops on beat one so we've got something that's that's great now a little closer to what we need in terms of trying to synchronize with other stuff so let's start it adjust the pitch and with the pitch adjusted that way you can notice how as much as i love that video um, i want to see hi this is dan pearson this is a run through of all of the new features included in Bitbox 2.0. This is it. I was very pleasant uh, settings page kind of way. I want to get to the chopping portion. Load up samples Great. and set up a, uh, a loop boundary there and get it to uh, cycle around in uh, various different ways. One thing, if you notice, it's upside down now. So they've, they've made a, an update in the last uh, release where this thing can be turned upside down so that you can keep your cables out of the way. So there's 16 uh, patchable bays there um, for your, oh no, there's many more than that. So I thought there was 16 for each pad, but there's not, there's way more. So I'll let him talk, not me. I've currently got this set to bi-directional and uh, reverse is on. And, uh, the release time uh, will control how long it takes to trail out. I've got uh, all these samples set to a different MIDI channel, so I can quickly swap between them. And uh, because uh, everything's polyphonic now, it's really quite easy to uh, another huge update. Build up some really nice textural it used soundscapes. Used to be a mono module. Now it's all poly. You can do sixteen voices. Each sample is now a voice. That's beautiful. It's very fripatronic. You can spend hours uh, making soundscapes out of one sample. It's a lot of fun. I definitely a lot of loop boundary going and you can get some. That's so dope. Quite interesting effects uh, by mucking around with different uh, sizes. This is loop so similar to and, Ableton. Um, it's ridiculous. Especially if you have it set to mono. 
That's exactly how Ableton. This is exactly how Ableton Simpler works. If you've ever used a sim the Simpler inside of Ableton, and I can't even see my damn screen to see if anybody's even here. Not that it matters. Um, okay, let me bring you guys over here so I can see you guys. Oh, there we go. I can see you guys now. All right, let me get back to this thing. Oops. All right. Then I can read some these comments. Get some really interesting bit crusher kind of effects going. Wait, Mr. B, you're back. Mr. B. Mr. B. Hey, do me do me a solid, Mr. B. Oh, wait, are you at work, buddy? If you're at work, then don't don't worry about it. I'm gonna drop this in the comments right now. If you're if you're capable of talking, Mr. B, click on that link I just put in there. If you're not, it's all good. No worries. There's a pad. Uh, I've got this one set to mono also. It's really good for uh, bass lines. Damn. Tracks really well over 10 octaves or so, which is fantastic. And uh, with the new release time, you can uh, really dial in the particular sound you're after. That's, that's beautiful. That's amazing. This has got to be my first module. Yeah, man. Bitbox. I'll tell you a little bit more in a second about this thing. This is going to blow your mind, bro. So that's a basic overview of the sampler mode. Clip mode has uh, changed very little since previous versions of Bitbox, but it's uh, primarily used for loops and for uh, audio that's recorded in. Uh, you could think of Bitbox as being 16 loop machines if you're into uh, live looping. And uh, you can now set uh, a predetermined uh, recording length and if you set the record quantize settings to a bar yes then um, when you hit record it will pretty much always start on the one and stop on the one so so in layman's terms what he's saying is that you can set pre-record you can pre-set your lip re uh, clip recordings so that when something is being played that you can hit play and record at the same time, and it will start the recording on a quantized beat so that everything stays in time. And this is in a module, in a, in a, you know, modular format. So it'll be, should be perfectly in time. Uh, so say you have a synth part that you're happy with and you want to record it in there and uh, move on to something else, repatch or whatever. Here's a little example. So I've got a sequence running. As long as you have a clock going into a uh, beatbox that's recording to the tempo. So we've got it set to four bars in length. By the way, this thing is all touch screen too. It's all multi-touch. So I can hit it. And we'll start recording. And then you can capture all of your uh, filter sweeps and what have you. And now if we stop the uh, sequence going and listen back. It should be amazing. perfectly in time. All right, so what I was going to say about this, which is amazing about this thing, is yes, it's called a bit box, 
but this is actually three machines in one box. So there's different firmware for this thing. There's a bit box. Oh, my camera's about to die. Let me just start that thing real quick. Always something. All right, I'm still here. Oops. All right, so there's this, it, there's a tool. So there's one that's called like the toolbox, the bit box, and like the MIDI box or something. But there are three different firmware uh, that you can use. So you can put it, you can put the firmware or software, whatever you want to call it, on an SD card. And then you can use it as Bitbox as the sampler. Then if you want to do something different workflow, if you get tired of that or you want to try something different, you can actually put the other SD card in and load the other firmware. And it's a totally then it's a totally different machine. So there's three versions of it, which I think is pretty interesting. Um, let me see if he talks about that. Actually, no, but I can go to the other video that does. This is Toolbox. This is a sequencer for your Eurorack synthesizer. It's a touchscreen interface. So you've got four gate sequencers. Um, you can change the step length or the um, step count. So you can you Toolbox know, is bitbox step pattern or less, and then change how the duration of the step. We can also then uh, we've also got these four uh, piano roll styles sequencers so you can just use kind of standard uh, touchscreen interface gestures to sequence and these all send out midi as well so you can go to here and select a midi channel or a midi port and then it will come out of these uh, midi outputs so you've got four midi outputs and but you can also channelize them so yeah we've got four gate sequencers four kind of pitch sequencers we've what then got the three frig? lfos which can be various different uh waveforms you can change the rate you can change the depth they can also be beat sync to the internal MIDI clock. Why do I keep losing my camera coming in here? So um, we've then got a uh, modulation style sequencer as well. So as well as these um, sequences and LFOs and, and the modulation sequencer, we've also got these external inputs and you can use these to modulate various different parameters. Okay, so this is kind of boring the, for me. Uh, so I'm going to go forward. That's the toolbox. Which is actually See how uh, Toolbox slicer, is controlling been, uh, Bitbox, and the Bitbox is slicing. The scan function here, and then uh, resequenced with uh, this sequencer down here. So we've got like a um, phrase sequencer or like a modulation sequencer, which we're using to resequence this break. That's kind of a little bit of a weird one, but we've also got another break going on. So and this all can be done playing. on the fly, which is the most amazing part. So that's this break down here. As you can see again, I'll just uh, I'll just reload that one in, so you can see how um, how easy it is to cut up breaks. So you just literally just scan it, Chopped. and because I'm using this uh, this pitch sequencer here, I can resequence um, the break. On the quite so this quickly. is all like all is a just... foreign language to me, as far as like modular stuff goes. I understand samplers and I understand sequencers and stuff, but you know, modular chopping next level. Um, there is another module. I was hoping Mr. B he's very, very knowledgeable on this stuff. And there's this one particular, uh, sampler that I want to show you guys. That is a, a modular sampler. That is crazy. That is absolutely crazy. I just can't remember what it's called. You know what? No, it's not the black box. Although I did see somebody in the chat. Uh, who was it? I dot a dot. Is that is that how I say it, man? 
I apologize. Uh, about uh, right here. Yeah, this is exactly the one I'm looking at right now. That's interesting. Check it out. That's what just popped up on my screen right here. The 1010. So that's cool, man. That's cool. Um, so that does look interesting. There's one in particular. Let me see if I can find the one that I was thinking of. Um, is this it right here? No, it's not the it's not that one. The one I'm thinking of is specifically for um it's for sampling. And actually, uh, Mr. B told me about this uh, a few weeks ago, and I didn't know what he was talking about. But then when I saw it, I was like, oh, wow, he's right. This is badass. If I can just find the one that it is. Um, he named it. He said it was, I'll know it once I see it. It's not that one. I'll show you guys what I'm seeing. It's not the poly end. It's not that one. It had a real different type of name. Mm, let's see. Is it this one? What is this one called? The 4MS? I think this is... I think this is one of the ones I saw. So I'm going to check out this one. Let me check out this one. Okay. Well, it's about the, that's about the right price. <laughs> No, that's not what we want. Um, all right, then let me just copy it. And I'll put it in this one. But I'm, I'm, I want to see if I can find this, this other one here. I feel like it looks like that. Um, let me see. Hey, what's up? I see you, Jazz. Thanks for being here, bro. Um, if you know about Eurorack or Modular, I'm trying to hone in. There's this one specific... This guy right here has got amazing knowledge. They all do. The ModBap guys. They've got uh, some really great knowledge on board about this stuff. We'll watch a video um at the end here by the way i do want to say uh happy martin luther king jr day um spread peace and positivity as much as you can we're all here doing the same thing trying to you know trying to connect with each other and share a message of unity so um thank you dr king for everything that you've done for our entire our entire world owes Martin Luther King Jr. a giant debt of gratitude. He pushed us forward so much. So all right. Okay, let me see. Make it's not uh morph here it is. It's the morphogene. That's what he called it. The morphogene. Okay, that's this one right here. The make noise. Morphogene. So let me pull that up. The morphogene. It's up there in price. All these are not going to be cheap because they're very specialized, you know. Let's take a look at it and see. I haven't seen this video, so... Hey guys, welcome to a tutorial on the Make Noise Soundhack Morphogene module, which is a Eurorack module that is basically a sampler on steroids, but you can actually manipulate the sounds in very intricate ways.
So there are a few different concepts on the morphogene which you should be familiar with. And they all sort of relate to a hierarchy of organizing sounds. So at the highest level, you have what's called a reel, and that is the biggest unit. And then within each reel, you have splices, and then each splice can have what's called a gene, um, which determines what subsection of the splice gets played back. So if we go back up, the morphogene can have up to 32 different reels, and a reel is basically a giant piece of recording. Uh, so you can think of it just like an audio file, for example. Each reel can be subdivided into 100 what are called splices. Wow. And a splice is just the subsection of the reel, so it's another piece of uh, audio smaller than the reel, but contained within the reel. And then below that, each splice, um, you can actually define what piece of audio loops within the splice. Uh, and that's what's determined by what's called a gene. So you have what's called a gene size, which determines the subsection of a splice which gets looped. And then there's another concept called slide. And that is basically the start point of the gene. This Finally, there's amazing. this concept of morph. And morph basically determines how two different um, loops of a gene play back, back to back. So as a gene gets looped, you can define the morph, which sort of changes the spacing between two subsequent genes. Um, so you can go from one extreme, which has a gap between two loop points. And as you increase the morph, it actually starts to blend and crossfade two what subsequent up, genes. All right, so here on the bottom left corner, we have the morphogene. So let's just quickly go over the front panel so you can see roughly where the controls are and what they do. All right, so on the top section here is where you will run your audio ins and outs. So you have two stereo inputs, two stereo outputs on this side, and then you have this sound on sound control, which controls the sort of uh, crossfade between the incoming signal and the recorded sound here. And that is also CV controllable. And then moving down, we have various different uh, concepts spread out across here. And they all sort of relate to the concepts I was talking about okay. uh, at the beginning. So let's see it. So over here on top left, we have gene size controls. I'm not trying to speed us up, but I'm trying so to speed this up. If it's at 12 o'clock, it called EOS splice and loops the does. entire splice to the first one. And you can also use this organize, which will queue up the next sound. So now I can move to the first one or the last one. And again, you can have up to 100 of these uh, within a reel. Right now, we have two. Wow, wait a minute. I can also patch a gate signal into shift here, which will advance to the next splice given some external gate signal. So I'm going to use the end of cycle here on the maths to control. You cannot control this thing. This is the. This is called the morphogene. It's a, a sampler module. So um, it's like a, uh, he said it's a, you know, a sampler on steroids. So it has the ability to bounce between slices. It can do 128 slices on any audio piece, apparently, on anything that you've sampled. It'll make it into 128 slices, and you can uh, choose which slice just by turning the dial but there's no numerical display. So it's all just kind of like winging it, which is kind of cool because then you're not so worried about exactly what it is that you're trying to find, or you're just kind of turning the knobs and doing things until you like the way it sounds. The morphogene is the one in the lower left-hand corner. This one right here. And of course, we can splice it up even further. And we can have CV control over the organized knob too. I want to see somebody use this thing. try uh, morphogene. So now I've created a bunch of different splices and if I want to delete a splice again I can hold shift and press splice.
love that sound. It's beautiful. That's my shit right there. Man, this thing's crazy. I love this thing. That's straight horror movie. I could hear some hard, you know, hard boom bap drums. That thing's pretty wild. Thank you. 
Yeah, I like that thing. I kind of got lost in that thing for a minute. No. Oh man, I left that up there the whole time. Damn. All right. What? I just took that down. Yeah, so anyway, guys, that thing is pretty awesome. Um, anyway, so go check out the, uh, you know, join the community, check out the website, check out the Facebook page. Um, there's lots of people in here. Rhythmic Kane's got a YouTube channel. Uh, Mr. Basic has a YouTube channel. Just about everybody. Ray D, um, Ray D's, you know, musician. So everybody in here has got, uh, got stuff, content. So just support each other. Um, this was my seventh day in a row, I believe. I got six more to go. Thank you guys for being here. Um, if you have any questions on anything that you think I can help you with, please leave a comment and support each other. Also, uh, in the beginning of this video, I did some iPad stuff. If you're interested in getting a hold of some you know, inexpensive iPad apps, some inexpensive, some are not so inexpensive but it beats thousands of dollars for hardware. So if you're just getting started and you want some cool sounds that you don't currently have in your box, an iPad is a great sound source. All right, guys, thank you for being here. Um, I just want to tell everybody that's here, thank you. Hopefully I didn't miss anybody. I believe I got everybody. If I didn't, I apologize. But happy Martin Luther King Jr. Day, everybody. And maybe I'll see you tomorrow. Peace, folks.